Okay, <clears throat> so we are doing uh, week eight, which is our midterm review. Uh, the midterm is already posted, so you can work on it. It's a take home midterm. Uh, and let's have a look at what I have for the review. Okay, so the review is just more problems. Uh, <clears throat> some of the things that you're gonna have to do are, why don't I just go jump to the midterm? You're gonna have to do a debugger program, uh, multiple choice, right? Uh, this one is uh, one attempt only, unless you really, really wanna redo it, then let me know. Uh, we have a debugger problem, a program. I gave you some kind of a program that is supposed to do something, and I showed the output, and you're supposed to fix it and get it to produce that output. Not very fancy. If you have been doing the work, not a hard assignment at all. The midterm two short programs has to do with functions. Uh, functions with parameters. So you need to know what a parameter is. You need to know what is a function. What does it mean for a function to return a value versus to show a value, okay? <clears throat> and what parameters are. So that's an important thing to do. I gotta go over that today with you. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you're going to uh, do a little bit of a longer program which asks the user to enter four sides and four angles. Uh, I used to have it with a rate with lists, but I guess you don't get to do lists for this one. So all it is is four sides and four angles. And uh, the program checks what kind of a ch shape this is, if it's a rhombus, square, or rectangle. Uh, <coughs> oh no, into a list. So yeah, you have to do it. I mean, you have to enter these into a li into lists. So you're going to have a list for the four sides. You're going to have a list for the four angles. Uh, that is uh, ten points out of these thirty. Uh, then what you have to do is uh, you have to validate the user input, right? I guess I'll have to go over that today too. If you forgot what it is, it's basically making sure the user enters good values. Uh, in this case, we're checking to see if they're all positive. And the program can repeat uh, after it's done if the user chooses to. So we've done a few of these also. The how you identify quadrilateral. Uh, all four sides have to have the same length. Angle one is equal to angle three. Angle two is equal to angle four. Uh, after that, you need to check if it's a square. With a square, all four sides are equal. All angles are equal. And uh, rectangle is the last one where uh, side one is equal to side three, side two is equal to side four, and all the angles are equal. Okay, so if you notice in here, this one and this one are kind of doing similar things. Uh, basically, we're checking element one and, and two, element one and three, and element two and four in a list. Here, we're doing the same thing, and then here we're checking all things to be equal on the list. So you can actually write a function which will do this this job and you'll reduce your code. You don't have to, but functions will make your life easier on this. Okay, so how it's supposed to run, I have it shown underneath. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just go over some of these things now to hopefully help you with this thing, which is not gonna be very hard. All right, so first of all, uh, let's go over a little bit functions. This is your function definition, right? This is a parameter. This is another parameter, right? The variables that go in between the parentheses are your parameters. Uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted my function to show a value, let's say uh, show the sum of the two values if they are the same. I do print, right? And I can just do, uh, uh, let's just do sum here. Sum is equal to parameter one plus parameter two. And then if I want to show it, I do a print in here and I show you the sum is this, okay? If I wanted to uh, call this program, I mean this function, I will do it function 
This is calling a function that shows a value. I do, uh, these are two, well, let's say if they are the same or if they're not the same, let's do if they're not the same, show this. Okay, so if they're not the same, if, uh, let's just call it, yeah, parameter. Parameter one is not equal to parameter two, then you're going to print this thing, right? That's showing it. So if they're not equal, let's, let's say you have something like this or you have something like this, right? They're not, they're not equal, then you can just call the function. You're gonna to jump to the function definition. They're not equal. You're gonna to get to this print and you're just gonna show the sum with the print, okay? Now let's look at the one where you're going to uh, return, return uh, the, you know, the doubled sum if the values are the same. So if my parameter one is equal to my parameter two, then I'm going to return uh, sum times two, okay? And how do I call a function that do, does this? So I'm calling a function that returns a value. I have to call it from inside of a print, right? So if I have something like two, two, they're both the same. Oops, I gotta call my function. This is function, okay? So I'm calling the function from inside of a print. We're gonna jump to the function definition. Uh, these two values are the same. So we're going to return the value of uh, the sum t doubled right back inside of this print. Okay, so you might wanna do a couple of tests, not that it will make a difference for this case, all right? Ch ch check it with a couple of different values. And there you go. So parameters, function definitions, uh, showing a value from a function, returning a value from a function, how you call a function that shows a value, and how you call a function that returns a value. That's it. Functions review done. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So let's say uh, I wanted to have uh, my program repeat. All right, so let's say I'm going to have, uh, maybe the user enters some values. So I'm going to have uh, a is equal to int input, and I do um, enter first number, and then I do b, same thing. All right. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to, um, well, I need to figure out how I'm gonna call it. So if, if my A is equal to B, then I'm going to print it, print function AB, okay? And else, or I can say, well, let's do else. Now let's do if. if a is not equal to b, then I'm going to call my function like this, function a, b, okay? So if I run this thing, syntax all the way at the top, forgot my colon, parameter one not defined, that's why you should test your programs as, as early as possible so that you avoid having consistent typos. Okay, there you go. All right, so first number, one, one, okay. All right, so they're the same, so returning double the sum. So it happens one time. Let's say I wanted to uh, validate my user input. So uh, let's say I want to uh, validate user input, which is, um, and maybe, mm, now we'll, we'll talk about this in a second. So valid user input uh, to make sure that A and B are both positive, All right? So if, or not if, while my A is less than zero, I'm going to ask this question again, right? And same thing with my 
other one with my b, all right, while b is less than zero, then we're going to be entering the second number. Okay, so that's your input validation, and uh, after that's all done, then I want to hold. I want. I want to have this part of the code repeat, right? Or maybe I want to hold the whole program to repeat. Well, let's do it right here. So I want. I want the below code to repeat as many times as the user desires. All right. So if I want. This is the part to repeat, right? To repeat all this from here to all the way there, all right? So what I do, I just put a loop around it. I'm gonna get my loop while true, and you don't need the parentheses, by the way. And then I, I grab everything underneath it. And I just indent it. Okay, and then test that again. So first number one one. Okay, and it keeps repeating over and over two two. Okay, but now I don't have a choice for the user to decide. <coughs> so what I want to do is all the way at the bottom. I want to say something like repeat equals input would you like to repeat yes no right and then if my repeat is not equal to yes uh, yes then I break the loop right this here stops the loop and check it again alright first number second number would you like to repeat yes First number, second number, would you like to repeat? No. And that's it. So we covered input validation, uh, making the program repeat by putting everything inside of a big loop, uh, calling a function that shows a value, calling a function that returns a value, uh, parameter, right, returning values. So what else is left? Uh, lists. So this, this pretty much covers uh, a lot of the things that these programs ask you to do, except uh, lists, okay? <coughs> so, <coughs> let's do this. So I'll add uh, three values to the list, three values to a list, uh, and check if uh, they are all equal, right? Uh, that will be something like, all right, let me make a function for it. Well, no, no function. So a list, that's an empty list. All right, make an empty list first. Then I'm going to ask the user to enter three values. And the easiest thing to do is, since I know it's going to be three, I make a loop. That happens three times, All right? Is it going to happen three times? I don't know. Uh, well, it will. But if you wanted to, you could test it. I equals I. Okay. Let me take out this piece of code here because I don't want to see it. It's going to ask me for input. Okay. So let's check to see if this loop is going to happen three times. Uh, it does, zero, one, two, okay. The next thing is I am going to comment this piece out, ask the user for input, uh, num equals int input, let's say they're gonna be integers, please enter number, and let's call this D, all right, percent I. Uh, and this is going to be percent D, right? I tells it we're going to insert an integer here. What integer are we going to insert? The D, 
which is going to which is basically this variable that I showed earlier. So it should show me show number zero one two three. I mean zero one two. I don't want it to show me zero one two, which is why I'm going to do parentheses around this, right? And I'm going to do plus one. So that way it will show me instead of zero one two, it will show me one two three. Okay. <coughs> then I'm going to get every one of these values. And by the way, notice this. So if I if I don't if I have a missing uh, parentheses, so I have one, two, three, but I only have two closing ones. And if I try to hit the enter, indentation kind of gets messed up. As soon as that happens, that's a warning sign that there's something wrong with your code. Okay. So if the indentation does not line up the way it should, check your code. Uh, all right. So then maybe I want to check to see if a num is positive. Well, num is less than zero, I'm gonna say enter another number. All right, keep asking them the same thing. And then once they get that thing in, then I say uh, a list dot append, and then I add that number, okay? <clears throat> and then after that's all done, you wanna to check to see what your list looks like. All right, number one, I don't like how this looks. Oops. Uh, please enter a number here. There you go. Don't crash on me. Okay. Normally it never crashes, except now, except the one time you're watching. Uh, it's probably saved at least. Okay, so test this thing. <clears throat> okay, so number one, number two, number two, number two, number two, well, two, and then three. All right, did I make the list? I made the list. Did I make sure that they're all positive? Sure, I did. Okay, uh, and then <clears throat> you can check to see if all these different things are the same. So let's say if you have, if you're a list zero is equal to your a list one and your a list one is equal to your a list two right those are your indexes and remember that's why you want to test this thing so you can show yourself what these are all right my indexes were this is my index zero, my index one, index two, right? So I'm comparing first one to second one, second one to third one. If they're all equal, then I don't know, maybe I give some kind of a message. Print, they're all equal. Okay, any questions? Good enough? Okay, so <clears throat> uh, that is, you know, or let's let's do one more. Uh, let's say I want to check to see uh, check check to see if so. This is check to see if they're all equal. And let's check to see if uh, first is equal to third. Okay. So in that case, I'm just gonna copy this and recycle. Okay, first is equal to third, right? First, third, and I get rid of this. All right, first is equal to third. Okay, <clears throat> so that's a uh, that's in a nutshell what you can do, and of course you can put this stuff inside of a function, but I'm not gonna do it. Okay. This is pretty much your uh, midterm review. 
So you know how to you know you know how to make a program repeat itself. You know how to validate user input. You know how to call a function that shows uh, returns a value. You know how to call a function that returns a value. Uh, you know how to make an empty list and add a bunch of values to it. You know how to check if particular elements in the list are equal to each other. Um, you know what a parameter is. You know what a function definition is. You know the different function calls, right? We did a bunch of that. Uh, that's the main stuff. So I want you to pretty much, oh, and of course, you need to know that how to use an if, right, with the AND logical operators. Um, <clears throat> so this is pretty much your midterm review. Midterm review. Okay. All the way to there. All right, that's the end of the midterm review. So now what I'm going to do, I think, is let's see what else I have. Okay, so that's the midterm review. Again, multiple choice, debugger program. Uh, the two short programs are dealing with a function. And the longer program deals with, uh, you know, just find out what kind of a shape it is using lists, validate user input, make sure the program repeats if the user want, wants to. <clears throat> now let's look at this week. Uh, and I had some, you know, older examples in here. Uh, previous semesters, not too long ago, what I used to do was, uh, I would, instead of just giving you a program like I did here, uh, the debug program, just giving you a program and asking you to fix it, what I used to do was, I used to do this. I used to give students an actual program, but a picture of a program, and tell them to find the errors by inspection. Okay? I don't know which one's better. Maybe I'll change back to the original format, but I, it kind of makes more sense to me uh, for you to be able to just fix the program, and if it works, it works. Okay? Uh, but before you were supposed to just look at it by inspection without using idle and then find the bugs. Uh, so let's see if you can tell me uh, where do you see any issues with this thing. So first of all, we're going to be, uh, is this how, is this line okay? Doesn't have, have you could. You don't have to have parameters. Okay. You didn't close the print. I, I. Okay. Before we get to the print, what about this line? The DF midterm. What's missing at the end? Uh, said Collins, right? I missed Colin. Okay. The print. You said I forgot to close it right here, right? So that's one. Okay. Here, looking at this thing here, it says how many is equal to how many numbers would you like to add? What's wrong with this picture? No end, no end or float. Yeah, it, it's it's it means like I mean it looks like I want a, a number, but this is not going to give me a number. It's going to give me a string. Okay, how about this one here? Same thing. Colon no colon at the end. Uh, what about this line? Number is equal to random. It looks right, but then what am I importing? Am I importing random? I'm importing turtle. All right. So yeah, you you're you're not importing the light the right library for you to be using the random. Okay, total is equal to total plus random. Is that right? What is it supposed to be? Total is equal to total plus. Uh, this should be random is not a variable. I'm basically trying to add up. A, I'm trying to get the sum of, of a whole bunch of, of a whole bunch of variables. There's one thing that's wrong with this. Is first of all, what's the value of? You're telling this here. You're telling it you are equal to your old value plus random. Let's ignore the random part. But what's the old value of total? I failed to specify. So it will give me a, this line right here. Even if this wasn't a problem, it will give me an error. It'll say that no, this is. You haven't given it an initial value, so what do I need to do? I need to put a total equals to zero somewhere before I start doing that. Okay, what about the random? Random is just a function that I'm using to create a random number, but that's not a variable. What is this supposed to be? 
or number or just or, or this variable number okay <clears throat> um, how many is equal to how many plus one uh, this would be a problem if the user entered this as a string because it will think that you're trying to add a number to a string it's not going to work okay this one's kind of obvious I forgot to pull it, close the quotes what about this, this line all the way at the bottom parentheses okay so that's that's the kind of stuff that you know if you've been doing the programs you should be you know pretty good at spotting them okay <clears throat> so he came for the wrong class <laughs> his class is after okay so um, all right uh, what else what else what else uh, splitting strings you, I'm not really going to ask you to do anything with splitting strings. Uh, well, except these review exercises here. <coughs> and they're worth points, so do them. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's go through this stuff. And uh, let me give you some clues. And uh, let's see. Because i got to do one more thing. I don't want you to take off on me. Let me... Before I do the review, I gotta do one of these. If you've seen them, who wants to do me a favor and take this to the office? What is it? It's the it's the class evaluation thing. So I have to I have to distribute it. You you basically rate me and and uh, take it to the office. Okay, thanks. So let me pause this for a second. Okay, so now let's look at. Uh, first of all, splitting strings. So let's say I have uh, let's say I want to have uh, uh, ask the user to enter a string and split it into words. And by the way, this is you know this is where the more fun begins with Python, <clears throat> which is uh, it's really good with working with strings, and that is why it's a data mining language. It's a hacker language. In fact, if you want to look at some you know interesting applications of you know what you can do with Python, Google Violent Python, right? Violent Python. First assignment in, in, in that book is uh, basically here's a password protected file, use Python to hack it. Okay, and then actually later on, in a few weeks, I'm going to show you how to hack a password with with Python. So <clears throat> I'll teach you a little bit about encryption and all that good stuff along the way. Okay, so I have a sentence is equal to input, enter a sentence, right? And since I am lazy and I don't want to enter things every time, I'm just going to comment this out and I'm going to assume that the user entered one, two, three, four, right? Five. Okay? So those are, that's my sentence. If I wanted to show you the sentence, print sentence equals sentence. Run it. Uh, where is that coming from? Oh, that's from here. Let me take this out. I don't want to enter things. And run it again. Okay, so there's my sentence. Nothing unusual, it's just a string. But now watch, if I wanted to split it into words, is equal to sentence. I think I'm getting the alert from Monterey. Like every all the community colleges decided to do their drill at the same time. Uh, sentence that split, right? So split splits a uh, string by any number of spaces. Let me increase the font size a little bit. Okay. All right. 
So split splits a, a string by any number of sentence, uh, any of other space, any number of spaces. And what I what I mean by any number of spaces is here I have one space, here I could have two spaces, here I might have one space again, here I'm going to have a bunch of spaces. What it will do is it will grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this, and grab this, and then it's going to put them in one big list, and that list is going to be called words. I'm going to do print words uh, equals words. All right, so here you go. We got to make we made a list, and now that we have this thing into a list, we're going to look at. Let's say we want to look for look for uh, how many how many words are in the sentence. Any ideas how we can do this? There are words in the sentence. How do we check how many things are in the list? Length, L-E-N, words. Five words, okay? <clears throat> Let's say I want to look for the longest word. Okay, I go in there, uh, look for the longest word. 4i in range from 0 to the length of the words list. And I'm going to, let's say, when my i is equal to 0, if i is equal to 0, double equal, then, oh, by the way, common mistake, it might be one of your debug questions, uh, is this, right? Single equal assigns 0 to i, double equal checks to see if i is equal to 0. Okay, uh, so if I'm if my i is equal to zero, which means that I'm going through this loop for the first time, I'm basically at this word. <clears throat> I'm going to make a variable longest, which is equal to uh, words i. Okay, so make variable longest equal to the first word. Okay, else. So this and this here happens. So this is happens for all other words after the first. And we're going to check to see if any other word, words i, is greater than my longest, all right? So if any word after the first is longer, right, than longest, then longest is equal to that new word, all right? So that is, that is your new longest. And see if it finds it. Print longest word is, and if there's two words that have the same length, it will show you the first word that has that length. And actually, why don't I do this? I also want to save, uh, no, that's good. So this longest, let's see if it finds it. Oops, longest word is two. That's a good one. If a word is greater than longest. Let's do this. Longest is equal to words zero. All right, that's basically the, doing this piece. Except now what I'm doing is I am defining longest outside of the loop so that it can be recognized. And I'm going to make this loop go from 1 to whatever I need. And check again. I think we're looking for the shortest. That doesn't make sense. If any word is bigger than longest, longest starts as 1. Print uh, words I words I. What am I missing? Oh, I know. Wait. You can't check like that. They're strings. Let's go back to what I had. Well, I'll leave it like this. So the issue is this: I have a string. This is, this is one string, right? So I'm comparing basically this 
to another string. So what I need to do is I need to look at the length of each of these. All right. Split, I used it right here. What's that? Yes, you have to use the split. You have to use the split function to get this big string split into words by spaces. You put those, you know, you put those in the list. That's your list. Now we're going through the list and looking at which one of these is the longest, right? So if the length of the word, if any of these words is greater than the length of the longest, that's why it wasn't working. Then we're going to do this. <coughs> so do it again. Hope it works. There you go. Now it's three. What if I wanted to see how long this how many characters this one is? Print that word has uh, len longest characters. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, maybe I want to show the first and the last word. Want to show the first and last word. You should know how to do this at this point. So, want to help me out? Let's say I want to do it right here. Okay, print words. First word is print last word is. Okay, so help me out. Which one's the first word? And Remember that if you if you can't visualize what you're working with, it's okay to copy that thing. All right, this was the words. Remember we have indexes for lists. Index zero, one, two, three, four. Huh? Well, first one is what? It's, it's this one. So how am I going to show it? Words, square brackets, what's in the square brackets? There, yeah. all right. And what about uh, the last one? Words, and I let's say it, I don't know how many words are in the sentence. The first one is easy, it's always zero. What about the last one? So, what's that? What minus one? The well, minus one is right, but what minus one? <coughs> Words, yeah, it's words. So let's look. So remember, the last one, if we have, whoops, remember, if we have uh, len of words, what is this equal to? How many words are in here? Huh? Five. Five. All right. So this number here, this one, is what? It's len of words minus one. So if I just plug that in, oops, len of words minus one, then I should get the last word. Okay, first word is one, last word is five. Am I happy? Yeah, for now. Okay, so that's pretty much, I gave you the answer for these here. Uh, then you have smallest, largest, sum, and average with lists, which is same thing you've done already. You did a couple of these, right? But now with lists, so I'm not going to give you a hint on that one. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, sum, average, min, max. I think these are, these are actual functions. <coughs> so let's uh, just real quick. I think I have a hint on this in, in the actual assignment. Yeah, it's in there. Okay, so if you look at this, this is actually a very good one, and, and uh, I will ask you to use a bunch of these functions for your final exam or whatever you want to call it, the final project, uh, the final program. There's going to be a project too. Okay, so it goes like this. You're supposed to read. You're supposed to define all these different functions. They already exist in the language, right? Python has its own sum, it has its own average, it's its own min, its own max. But remember how I was saying that you don't get to use them because unless you write them yourself, you don't know how they work. You know, I don't want you to use it something that you don't know how it works. So now we're going to go in there. We're going to write them. 
Okay, what's the sum? Well, we already done it, right? You have some variable total, you have a loop that goes through the length of the list, whatever that list is, is the parameter, and then total is equal to total plus my list, i. So that's the sum of all the elements. And the assignment asks to do uh, this and then another couple of functions and call all of these from the main. So I give you an example of here's the main and here's my list. You don't have to ask the user to enter anything, right? Just make up some list, one, two, three. S is equal to sum, one, two, three, right? We're gonna call our sum function, which is going to take this list of one, two, three. In fact, I could have just put, instead of one, two, three here, I could have put a list, right? Sending that over, finding the sum, returning the sum, S is equal to that, and then I show you it. Okay, then you gotta call your main. You're gonna have one main. I've seen this a few times, right? You don't wanna have, I've seen students write a bunch of mains. So you're gonna have one main, and in that one main, you're gonna be calling all the different functions that you see here. Okay, make sense? Any questions? We're good? Okay, so that's 42. <clears throat> the next one is uh, sort. You already know how to sort, remember? Hopefully, the bubble sort. I don't know if I have the bubble sort. Yeah, I'll, I, have, I even have a link for it. Here's a link for the bubble sort, or the, the page that had the bubble sort, all right? which is this right here. Okay? So it's just one loop inside of another loop. This, this inner loop moves the biggest number to the right. Uh, this, this loop here makes the inner loop repeat as many times as it needs to. So at the end of the whole thing, you could start with a list that looks like this. And then at the end, it's going to sort it to a list. It will look like a list like this, okay? <clears throat> so what you have to do is, you're actually going to write a function. You're going to write a function which is called sort. It's going to take a list parameter and it's going to take a reverse parameter. The list parameter is just the list and then true or false tells it how to sort the thing, right? So if I say list false, it will sort it in ascending order. If I say list true, it will sort it in descending order. You know how to do that? How do you, how do you change how, how this thing sorts in ascending versus descending order? Let's try it. So if I go in here, sorting in ascending versus descending order in uh, using bubble sort. All right, so I got this thing, okay? Let's say I have uh, my list nums. Nums is equal to uh, three, one, two, four, all right? So ascending will be one, two, three, four, all right? <clears throat> and the descending the other way. Let's just write it, four, three, two, one, okay? So if I run this thing, print nums equals nums. All right, this is my ascending order. And let me just take this out. Copy it. Paste it. And this is going to be descending order, All right? So this one here already showed me that, All right? So it's already in ascending order, but now what I want to do is I'm going to change it to this. All I got to do is I got to flip this, flip it backwards, and maybe I should have shown it. Again. <clears throat> And there you go, ascending versus descending. So all you gotta do is you gotta throw, you have to throw this stuff inside of a function. You're gonna have one if that checks to see if this parameter, right? If this parameter here is equal to reverse, I mean, if it's equal to false, then you do it this way. Otherwise you have another if, if this thing is equal to true, then you do it the other way. So you just have the bubble sort twice inside of a, inside of a function. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that. And done with the bubble sort. Uh, and stars. So these, these, these are actually a little bit more challenging. So the stars, lockers, and prime numbers are a little bit more challenging. 
All right, so let's look at the stars first. Okay, so the stars goes like this. Write a function which outputs as many crosses as the parameter num crosses indicates. And uh, you're not allowed to use string concatenation or multiplication. So if you, if you, don't, you forgot what the string concatenation is, let's say I have a, I don't know, string is equal to this, right? And then if I do string plus equals this, right? Print string, let's just show that, yeah. String equals, now I'll just show it like this. String, right? If I do it, if I do this here, it will show this. If I do it after, I'm basically telling it, add another star to it and it'll do this. <clears throat> but that's too easy. You don't get to use that. Okay? So don't get to use this. So string concatenation. Don't use this for stars program. Okay? So how are we going to do it? Well, I'll show you. So first of all, let's say I want to write a function stars, right? So it's going to be df. Is it stars? Stars stars and I'm gonna have num crosses okay and then uh, when I call my stars let's say I'm gonna give it a value of five and I'm trying to do this thing right stars crosses whatever okay so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to show me just this this column of, of the stars okay so let's go with crosses so print I'm going to do this. <clears throat> okay, so if I run this thing and I didn't call it, is that what happened? Cross this. Oh no, I didn't do a loop. Okay, so if I just do it this way, it just shows me one plus. So what I have to do is I have to write a loop for i in range from zero to the num crosses, steps of one. I'm going to grab this thing, All right? Now when I run this thing, I should see five crosses, right? So this is what I got. All right? This is what I got. But this is what I want. All right? So what's missing? It's missing this one, it's missing this one, it's missing this one, it's missing this one. All right? <clears throat> so what's the relationship that's that I need to establish here? Well, if I say that these are my line numbers, right? If this is my line line 0, all right? Oops. All right, so this is line 0, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. <clears throat> How many stars how many extra stars do that do I need to add on line zero? None. All right. Add zero stars. How many stars do I need to add on line one? One. All right. So that's that's basically the relationship. And just like usual, I like to write these out so I can see it. All right. So this is going to be one stars. On the line two, I need to add two stars. All right. On line three, I need to add three stars. All right, line four, four stars, okay? Nice, come on, four stars. Okay, so now that I know this relationship, I know that, <clears throat> let's say I'm gonna call this thing, instead of an I, I'm just gonna call it line, right? So when line is equal to zero, I add zero stars. When line is equal to one, I add one stars. So here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do and equals, quote, quote, and you remember what that does, right? Oops. What does this do? Anyone? Anyone? Huh? What's that? Do not show a new line, right? So this here prevents uh, showing a new line, right? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a new line just yet. I'm going to here now add as many crosses, right? As many of these 
as the value for line. So I'm going to do for uh, x, well, let's just say i in range from 0 to line steps of 1. And then I'm going to do another one of these to add extra stars. All right? And then when this one is done, I'm going to do a new line. All right? So this one is add the extra stars, the extra crosses. And then this one here is show a new line. So if, let's say we're, we start going through this loop, right? Line initially is zero. We're going to show this. Then we go to this loop for i in range from zero to zero. So this loop is never going to happen. We're just going to show a new line. So we're going to show this. Then we're going to go back to the, you know, iterate through the loop again. <clears throat> now line is equal to one. I'm going to show you this one. Then I'm going to go through this loop. This loop is going to go from zero to one. So it's going to happen one time. I'm going to show you one more time, one star. The loop, this loop is going to end. And then I'm going to show you a new line. And then it's basically we show this, All right? So every time I go, every time I go through this loop, Every time I iterate through this loop, this inner inside loop is going to happen one more time. Okay? And the result is something like this. Run it. And there you go. All right? So that's the stars. Uh, I pretty much gave you the answers for it. So if you want to, show it in reverse order. Okay? Maybe I should have shown it in reverse order. <clears throat> Maybe I should flip this thing to a reverse order. But let's leave it like that. Okay? So... Think about, since I already gave you the answer for this, think about how you could do it in reverse order. Meaning, do this first, that this line is going to show all the way in top, then the second line is going to show underneath, then this one is going to show underneath those two, and then so on and so on. Okay, so it starts with five all the way on top and ends with one all the way at the bottom. Okay, what's the point of this? Well, number one, you're using a function. Number two, you're using nested loops. So application of nested loops. <coughs> Okay, questions? We got it. Okay, next one is uh, the lockers. All right, lockers is another really interesting one. Uh, and it's also challenging. So I guess I'll walk you through it. And again, if you just do this only if you, you know, if you completely get stuck only then look at my solution. Otherwise, try to solve it on your own. So, and if you end up looking at my solution and you solve it completely, then, you know, stop looking at the solution, stop looking at your, or your own solution too, and do the problem all over again, this time without looking at it. Okay, so it goes like this. This is actually an interesting problem. Like I used to teach for a long time at, at Hartnell College and I thought uh, scientific programming for engineers and one of my engineering students was taking a differential equations class. And in the, in the differential, differential equations class, they gave him this problem. And he asked the instructor if he could write a program to solve this thing for him. Right? So the instructor said yes. And the student came to me. And we wrote the program. So now you get it. So <clears throat> uh, the problem is this. You have 1,000 lockers and 1,000 students. All lockers are initially locked. And then it goes like this. So they're all locked. Then the first student opens all the lockers. Second student goes and closes every other locker, right? So every other means locker one, locker three, locker five, right? Closes every one of those. They were initially locked, then they were opened, and then every other is closed. Then the third student goes, and if every locker, if any locker is closed, opens it, or if any locker is open, it closes it. Then the fourth student does that for every fourth locker, and then so on and so on and so on. And then, right? And then the question is write a program to determine which exact lockers are open and how many of these lockers. So count how many and tell me which ones. Is it locker one, locker two, locker three? And I remember the solution for this in the differential equations class was like a page long. Okay? And it wasn't very easy to understand, but you're going to see like what a benefit it is if you know how to write a program in this kind of situation how how easy it is to think about this stuff and write a program for it okay so here's what we're going to do uh, we have 
I'm just gonna follow the hints that I have in here or I can just go look at this. So I, I would recommend you to follow my hints, uh, <clears throat> but I we don't need to follow my own hints. So let's uh, show you how to do the lockers. Okay, so we have a uh, thousand lockers and all lockers are initially locked, right? So I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna call it a look uh, uh, a list. I'm gonna call it lockers. I'm gonna make an empty list, right? So make empty list for lockers. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to let's say I'm gonna say that one means locked and zero means open. I can put an L and an O if I wanted to, but I don't have to. Okay, so since all lockers are initially locked, right? Let me move this comment a little bit down. So all lockers are initially locked. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop that happens a thousand times for I in range from zero to 1000 steps of one. And I'm going to fill up this lockers or list. <coughs> lockers that append I'm going to just fill it up with a bunch of ones okay I'm going to show you the lockers and I'm going to show you how many of them there are because it's going to look like a lot okay then there you go it's a whole bunch of ones how many ones well it's a thousand I don't need to go count them that's what this is for yeah okay so I got I basically made a list of lockers. They're all locked. Okay, now let's go to the next one. First student opens all lockers. All right, first student opens all lockers. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to grab this loop, copy it, throw it in there. And I'm going to say lockers i is equal to zero. Right? This is open all the lockers. Okay. <coughs> So this one is fill, fill the list with 1,000 ones. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all these ones to zeros. And if you don't believe it, let's look at it. Run again. All right, so yeah, I had a thousand of these ones and then I went and I flipped them all to zeros, okay? Now let's go to the second student. Second student closes every other locker. Okay, second student lock closes every other locker. So basically what I have to do is I'm going to just recycle this thing. All right? And uh, this thing is going to go to locked, right? Closes every other locker. Okay, but if I do it with a with an increment of one, that's not going to work. Yeah, it needs to be a two, right? So, and then I can look at it again if I wanted to. Print, do a little separator. All right, look at that, and you can see the you know I went from a bunch of zeros to now they're all alternating. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now we're gonna to go to do the third student. Okay, and then at this point, I'm not gonna, I'm going to stop showing them because it's, it's gonna start getting confusing. So this, the third student, what I mean showing is, I'm not gonna show the, I'm not gonna show this anymore because now they're gonna start getting all scrambled up all over the place. <clears throat> so third student opens if it's closed or closes if it's open every third locker. So you already said that, you already figured out that this thing has to be what number? three okay all right and then in there I'm going to do if my lockers I is equal to open I'm going to do uh, lockers I is locked all right so if it's open if it is open lock it all right and then what I'm going to do is let's do this first if lockers I is equal to locked 
then lockers i is equal to open. All right, so now if, if it is locked, open it. What's the problem with this picture now? Let's say, let's say I have, actually, let's do this. I'm gonna do an elif. Why do I need to have an elif instead of an if here? Since you're playing on your phone, why don't you tell me? Why do I need to have an if and an elif? <clears throat> If I have if I have a if I have a locker which is open and I locked it and I have an if after that what is it going to do it will it will undo its it will undo its work every time right so what I need to do is I need to tell okay if it is open lock it otherwise right if it is locked open it okay so that's the reason I want to do an an, an elif here and that's important stuff okay so that's the third student now the fourth student fourth student right what do you think I'm gonna have to do same thing all right I'm just gonna grab this whole thing here I'm gonna copy it maybe change a little bit what do I need to change four. yeah change this to four okay all right well guess what we're gonna have to do for the fifth student same deal, all right, fifth student. I just have to change this to five, right? But I have another 995 students, right? I don't wanna go copy paste this thing 995 times more. But what I wanna do is I wanna establish my pattern, just like I did with a lot of these other ones. So let's go, let me go all the way to, so now I want, so, and so on. And now let's let's say I want to go all the way to the thousand student. All right, so I go to the thousand student. What do I need to change? All right, I just have to change what? Five to a thousand. Right? Okay. I mean, I'm just doing the same thing that I was doing, right? So I have to. If I did it here, if I did it here, if I did it here, then I should do it for the last one too. Okay. So. Now let's think of a way of making this thing repeat itself instead of me having to copy paste it a thousand times. So I'm going to get this, All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, hold on. Why don't I call this here another variable, this one? I'll call this J, right? The, the initial value of J is three, right? Then go, then J goes to four, then J goes to five, then all the way at the end, the last value of J here is 1000, right? So that means that if I grab this thing here and I throw it here and I make this a J, right? Then I have to just make a loop here for J in range, where, where, where did I say it starts? Three, All right, so the first one is three. Where did I say it ends? A thousand. And it's going to increase by how much? Plus one every time, okay, but if I say a thousand here, is this loop going to go all the way to a thousand? 999, so I don't want 999, I want 1,000. So I need to change this to what? 1,001. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm gonna grab this, tab it. And now this, the one, the, this here on the bottom, right? Loop to repeat, or this is, this here is open and close lockers three to 1,000. Yes, or open and close for students, <clears throat> three through 1,000. Okay, so that's done. <clears throat> now what we gotta do is, after the program does its magic, right, the next thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look for the open lockers. Am I supposed to look for open lockers? 
Which ones are open? Yeah, okay. So then I have to look for look for open lockers. And that's easy. For I in range from zero to 1000, steps of one. Uh, if any of these lockers are open, then uh, I can show it. Print locker I is open, right? But I also want to count them. So let me make a count variable. And every time I find one of these, I count it. Count plus equals one. And I'll show you that there are print, there are count open lockers. Okay, run it. And these are my lockers. 31 open lockers. One is closed. One. Yeah, one is closed. Two, one is closed, uh, zero is open, yeah. And what you're seeing on top is not the final version of these. Hmm? No, I'm counting the zeros. Because it asked for how many lockers, how many lockers are open. I defined that, yeah, that's why in the beginning when I, when I started writing this thing, the, for the thing that I started with, I said, okay, one is gonna be locked, zero is gonna be open. I didn't have to put one and zero, I could have just put, instead of this, I could have put like O, right? And I could have put an L and then counted those instead, right? Make sense? Okay, so you can see that even though it's a pretty complicated program problem for a, a person to like wrap your mind around it, if you feed that information in the program, it'll do the magic for you very easily, okay? <coughs> So there you go. We, we, we don't have to do a whole page of you know, summations and series and all kinds of other stuff for the differential equations class. I'm pretty sure the instructor wasn't happy with you know, how easy the, the solution came out to be. Or probably didn't know. Anyway, so this is your uh, lockers, which was one of the more interesting up to this point. Uh, and then last one that I want to show you is uh, the prime numbers business. All right, so you guys know what a prime number is? No? Okay, it's fine. Well, it's a number that can be only divided by either one or itself. And by divided, I mean evenly divided. So, for example, if you have the number four, right? If you try to divide four by two, you're ending up with a 2.0. Well, since, the, since four is evenly divisible by two, that's not a prime number. But now let's look at the five. Five divided by two is 2.5. 5 divided by 3 is 1.67, 5 divided by 4 is 1.25. Well, none of these were point zeros, right? So since we could not evenly divide this number 5 by anything between 2 to 4, uh, then it's a prime number, <coughs> okay? Same thing with 6, right? 6 divided by 2 is 3.0, so that automatically tells you it's not a prime number. If we look at the 7, 7 divided by 2, 3 and a half, 7 divided by 3, Etc. 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 None of these are evenly divisible, so that tells you that seven is a prime. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with some number, right? And again, this is I'm just going to do the simple the simple tests, right? Simple things will build up to a more complicated things. So this is the prime numbers. Okay, so let's say I have a num to test, and it's going to be let's say the five. Okay, then I said for five, I need to test it divided, I need to test it if it divides by two, if it divides by three, if it divides by four. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to divide, so I have to try to divide this, try to divide five by two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to try to make a loop that generates these numbers, which is easy from what we know, four I in range from zero to num to test steps of one. If I do it this way, what are the numbers it's going to give me? I is equal to zero, one, two, three, four, right? But I don't want that, I want just two, three, four, so how do I change the loop? What's the first one? Where does it start at? Two. 
Alright. And I don't want it to go... Uh, is that right? Yeah, I think so. All right. So then, then if I do this, then I should get 2, 3, 4. But then again, I'm never sure. I want to double check. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to throw like a little print just to see if I get the, the I right. Uh, I equals I. <coughs> Run it. And maybe I should have commented that part out. And I got the I as 2, 3, 4. Right? Okay. So I got what I wanted for that. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if my num to test modulus i equals equals zero. So this here checks to see check if evenly divisible. Okay. <clears throat> well, if it's evenly divisible, then I'm just going to break the loop, right? Stop checking because this is not a prime. Okay. But if I don't break the loop at any point and I do get all the way to the last one, to the four, which is actually num to test minus one, right? Then that would be a prime. So if I say if uh, my if my num to test modulus i is not equal to zero, right? And my i is equal to num to test minus one, right? I got all the way to the, to basically this piece here tells it, okay, we got to the last i, right? And this thing is still not equal to zero. And if it was equal to zero at any point, we will be out of the loop before we even get to this point. Then I'm gonna show you that this thing is a prime number. So I'll print num to test is a prime number. Okay, <clears throat> I check it. I should have commented these out, but whatever. Five is a prime number. Okay, let me take out the locker business. Okay, so now let me let me just go and change this number to six because we know that six is not a prime. Is it going to tell me that it's a prime? No. Okay, maybe seven. Let's see seven. Is it going to recognize that it's a prime number? Yeah. Okay, so I can assume that this thing works. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this number change instead of num to test just equal to five, I'm gonna make a loop for it. For num to test uh, in range, and I said find the prime numbers from three to 100, all right? So I go from three all the way to 101, steps of one, grab this thing, indent it in it, print it, And these are my prime numbers. Okay, so the, the the bigger the possible test for a prime number, the more times something has to happen. Uh, that's why you know you can do some research to see what's the largest prime they have calculated. They have actually used supercomputers to figure out some really really long numbers. Okay, but you know they had it's not it's not you cannot go up to infinity on on prime numbers because you know this. There's only so many times you can test this, this thing with a loop in a computer before the computer runs out of memory. Okay, so now you saw three different, you know, somewhat more complicated examples of, uh, you know, applications of nested loops and how you use them. Okay, prime numbers, locker numbers, and that star business that we did. Okay, and that is pretty much all I wanted to tell you this week. I'm going to uh, upload this stuff for you, and uh, thanks for coming. You're welcome to get going if you like. Do we have a class next week? What's next week? <laughs> the week after this week? 
Oh, the, yeah, midterm next week. Uh, I'll be here. Uh, if you want to, you can come here. You can, uh, uh, you could, best case scenario, work on the midterm programs and then come to class and ask me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to, you know, help you with the midterm, you know. In here, I'll be here, or in the office, whatever you like. You know, I, I work for you. Well, no, there's no lecture, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, I have to be here, so I'll be here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, don't worry about this. It's not that hard, right? If you've been doing the work, no big deal. Uh, and I have plenty of extra credits to make up for any, you know, any issues that you might have with the midterm. Also, I also for a regrade on the midterm. If you don't do well on it, I'll let you redo it. 50% of the lost points back I can give you. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I have. I will see you maybe next week. Otherwise, the week after. <laughs>